So Emotion Track has an amazing technology where they track facial expressions. And you have to do a five minute video, which is very hard to condense your entire case into five minutes. But when you really think about it, what it is, is it's your mini opening. You just do the mini opening and you do it on a camera. And we were able to, this is me at 1 a.m. in our office, eyes bloodshot, tired as can be, just giving the mini opening. They were able to turn around and within 24 hours, we had a full focus group knowing what the numbers were, what was too high, what was too low, where we could go with it. But we'll play the video so you have a good understanding of what the case is about and how it works. Hi, my name is Kale Paris and I'm an attorney with the Paris Law Firm. I wanna tell you about a high-speed rollover crash that took place on February 14th, 2018. It was Valentine's Day out in the Antelope Valley in California. And the defendant, as she was driving, was talking to her boyfriend on her cell phone. And as she approached the intersection of 60th Street West and Highway 138, she saw in the distance a stop sign. And just underneath that stop sign, it said in very clear letters that cross traffic does not stop. This indicated to her that this was a two-way stop. That is to say that Highway 138 traffic did not stop at that intersection. But because she was distracted while talking on her cell phone, she blew through the stop sign and hit the side of the plaintiff's vehicle. She hit it with so much force that it actually sheared the driver, the front driver tire clean off. This caused the vehicle to flip and go into a roll. The vehicle rolled several times down the highway before ultimately landing on the passenger side and skidding to a stop. In the collision, the plaintiff actually damaged a number of the discs in both his neck and his low back. The discs actually either ripped or protruded, pushing onto the nerves within his spine. He also actually hit his head on the pillar within the vehicle. This caused him to sustain what's called a traumatic brain injury, and it caused damage to his frontal lobe. In treating with his doctors over the past three years, he's incurred about $400,000 in medical bills, and he's already had multiple injections to his lower back multiple sessions for physical therapy. He's gone through chiropractic care, and he ultimately had what's called a fusion surgery, where the doctors fused two of the vertebrae in his lower back. His spine doctors actually anticipate that over the next 21 years, he's expected to continue to have injections and to continue to need multiple surgeries to address the issues in his neck, as well as some of the still damaged discs in his lower back. Ultimately, the doctors believe that it's going to cost about $4 million over the next 21 years to treat the issues within his spine stemming from this collision. To treat his brain injury, his doctors believe that he's going to continue to need MRIs. He's going to continue to need to see various physical therapists, mental therapists, and physicians of varying kinds to address what is a complex brain injury. In total, they estimate that this will cost approximately $8 million to treat over the next 21 years. What we need your help with is determining how much money this individual deserves for the pain and the suffering and the mental anguish that he has gone through and will go through as a result of this collision. We're asking you to help us determine what is a fair amount for the human elements, the human suffering that he has been dealing with and will deal with for the rest of his life. We believe that a fair amount for all that's gone on in his life amounts to more than $80 million. Thank you. What did we test there? 
there, there's a number of concepts in five minutes that we were able to test. We tested cell phone. We tested the pictures of the vehicle and what kind of emotional response that would evoke. We tested the actual medical care because you'll see those round numbers. That wasn't our life care plan at the time. We were bringing in our life care plan just through treating physicians. So we didn't have a life care plan that we knew going into it. And so we wanted to see what is too much at just for the economic aspect of it. And then we also tested the $80 million. And that was the big test that we were looking for. So yeah, so we were able to test all those things in a five minute video. And Charles will come up here and show you kind of what data we were able to get. And the turnaround time on this was less than 24 hours because you've got to re realize we had 48 hours from the time the answer was struck to the time we were picking a jury. And it was probably the roughest 48 hours I've ever been through because we had to get doctors in line. We had to fly people in. And it was even worse because we had a two day trial where there's no defense. And so every witness has to be one after the other. There is no defense idiot asking questions for an hour in between each session. And so it turned into a whirlwind, but Charles, you want to come up and kind of show the data that we were able to collect. And then if you'd like, you can kind of explain how this tied into everything when we were picking our jury. First, let me give you a little brief su summary of how this technology developed. A few years ago, we teamed up with this company that was developing an algorithm. Then it would Ekman was the, the guy who developed the facial expression and what they mean. You know, like one side of your lip, that's contempt. When you go like that, that's disgust, anger. And he was able to do six or seven of them that you and I could learn to do like that, you know, micro expressions. Now, you know, the, the problem with that, it's really the grouping of them that matter, not the individual expression. And when I was first learning it, you know, my wife would flash a contempt sign and I'd, get, <laughs> I'd go to crazy, you know? <laughs> oh God, she's gonna leave me, you know? So my wife ended up living with a flat face for, you know, the longest time, the poker face. It's actually a very, very complex science. And uh, so there's these algorithms now that can film you. And as I'm talking, it would be filming all of you. And it would be recording the emotion you were feeling as I spoke. Uh, remember the Trump uh, first debate with the Republicans? Anybody remember that? And he was there, the whole group were asked, will every, is there anybody here that will not commit to not forming an independent party if they lose the primary? And he raised his hand. Frank Luntz is the Republican pollster. He had his focus group there. He lost the election. You know, everybody was screaming. Well, and what really occurred was the angry people started making noise and other people tend to follow them. But the initial, the initial feeling of that crowd was joy. And this company I was working with, you know, we, we found that. I mean, we saw that right away. It, it was a different analysis than all the, the people out there doing this type of stuff made. And it was the correct one. So we were developing this, this uh, with this company. We had the jury analysis of it. And so we would film a focus group and we would measure the emotions that each fact developed. And then we would ask questions, you know, how much would you give essentially is what we wanted to know. The choreography of your case, it turns out, is very important. When they feel sad, when they feel angry. You know when the last place you want them feeling angry is? The closing. Or sad, the closing. You want to get as close to hope and joy as you can in the closing. We also saw things that if I waited until the end to tell you how much I wanted, you know what the, the emotion was? Fear. Yeah. Why? What if that were to happen to me? Is, is what we think is the reason. So now I always put the amount up front. I let them chew on it the whole trial, you know? So when it comes to the time to ask them for it, you don't get that fear response. And then what happened? 
Apple comes along and buys the underlying company and they didn't want to do anything with us. But keep this in mind, they know what you're feeling every time you look into that phone. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's remarkable technology. And then you guys came along and you know they've in, developed their own algorithm and they've got a really good one because they can detect confusion, you know? And it's the confusing case that loses. You, you wanna, the simpler the case, the more likely you are to win. And so with that, listen to him. He knows stuff that no one else knows, all right? Cal, you answered the most important question, which is how do you squeeze a 30 minute opening or a 30 minute closing into five minutes? And, and the other question that you answered is how can you possibly do it at one in the morning when you look like shit and your eyes are, are bloodshot? So you answered both of those questions and uh, I appreciate that. And uh, if you'll notice what he did in his five minutes, he opened, he showed pictures, he did the setup, he did the ask, he prepared the audience for the questions that they were trying to answer strategically. Uh, and he had five questions there that we'll uh, go through a little bit. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot about the stuff that we do. Um, Rex, you had a pretty good introduction there. The idea, of course, is to find out uh, what people are feeling about your work and your content and your witnesses and your story. Uh, it's not to find out what people think about it. It's what they feel about it because 93% of communication is, uh, is nonverbal. 7% is physical and or uh, rational, but we make all of our decisions based on emotion and then we rationalize them. And I think everybody knows that the numbers are different. You can Google it forever and you're going to get at least 80% is uh, uh, emotional. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the underlying caveat here. It behooves you to know what's happening um, uh, from a nonverbal standpoint. I say facial recognition because everybody knows what that is. Everybody has seen a James Bond movie. Uh, everybody's seen Matt Damon and seen who's the other guy, Tom, uh, uh, Tom Cruise in action. So we all know what facial recognition is. It's always uh, tied to security. In this case, it's tied to emotional readout. So everything rolls up. The first level of analysis is, um, does the audience trust you and trust what you're saying? Um, are you appealing as a person and as a spokesman, as, as a presenter and as a subject matter expert? And then are you believable? Overall, are you believable? That's an amalgamation of those two large buckets and all our emotions analysis roll up into one of these buckets. And lastly, overall, how does the uh, audience um, resonate with your story? So uh, I looked at someone communicating with me this week. Uh, we use eJury, e pretty happy with them. How are you guys different? And I don't know all the players in this space. So I went to eJury and the first sentence in there, what do we do statement was, uh, eJury helps attorneys figure out what people think about their case. So I just sent it back to him and I took out think and I put in feel. Uh, and now we have a discussion going. So what our goal is to help you guys think about what people uh, are feeling during your presentation. Uh, so one of the things that uh, you guys wanted to test, of course, you wanted to test um, different demographic groups. And I think the list that you put up was uh, about 60% Caucasian, 30% Hispanic, and there was one African-American guy in there. Um, but that was, uh, that was from your mock work, right? Okay. Okay. And I don't have the answer in, into what our audience was, but we did about a hundred people and we wanted to test all three groups so that you could get a readout on, on uh, the different groups. Um, and so what we did here, the first level of uh, analysis is again, for these buckets, are you truthful? Do you come across as being appealing and are you believable? And what this shows uh, we have a data insights person who's very well educated in the science. And unfortunately, these guys didn't have the, uh, uh, the benefit of going through the entire report debriefing because they didn't have time. Um, she stayed up all night Thursday night and you guys went to work on Friday or she stayed up all night Wednesday night and you went to you stayed up all night Thursday night. So the only thing that this revealed at the top level was that there was a gap with um, uh, Latinas. 
And what that indicated to her and what the science says, uh, there's something in your story that simply didn't resonate, didn't capture, uh, didn't reveal everything to that subpopulation. Uh, so that's one finding. Uh, so after the top level analysis of those four buckets, are you trustworthy? Is a story credible? Then you can go into the emotions. And then you can analyze, we've got seven emotions here. Uh, we're up to 21 now. And we're not just making up the emotions and we're not just doing big data where we catch all your pictures. As Rex, as you said, uh, the science of, of what this corner down frown means, uh, that science is established. We're not making it up. Um, and it's not just big data. So we are going into AI so that our, our technology is analyzing people in every second of every frame of every video. So it's not like afterwards we're taking this and just matching it up against the database. So it is true AI. Um, what this shows just, uh, this is the uh, Caucasian group. And what this shows, again, going to the overall story, I'm not gonna go into all of them, but uh, sadness and curiosity, you're gonna see for all three groups, all three ethnic groups, sadness and curiosity are, are off the charts against the baseline indexes that we've established for each of these emotions. So what that means is across all three groups, the story is absolutely believable, right? So the story that you presented, uh, it, was, it was simple, it was clear, it was only four minutes and 59 seconds, and you know that it's, it's, uh, it's, it's credible. Um, African-American, same thing, sadness outpaces curiosity, male and female, curiosity is strong and then um, uh, Latino and Latina. Um, so that's the readout that gets you to the full story. And then you would dive into these other emotions. And as I said, we're up to 22 different emotions now. And uh, what we do is enable you to watch the emotional reaction while you're watching your five minute speech or five minute media presentation. So in the toolkit, in the dashboard, then you can play your video and it's gonna be going along here like this, and you're gonna be looking at the emotions. And, and of course, what you're gonna be interested in, you're gonna be interested in a spike, or you're gonna be interested in a, in, a, in a trough. And then you're gonna be looking at what you said in the spike in the trough, and you're gonna make an adjustment. You're gonna say, oh, that was a bad word, right? Or that was a bad phrase, or that was certainly not clear, or there's something there that, that I really need to adjust and pay attention to. Yeah. The huge value for this is when you have pictures. That's what we saw on all of ours. Which of the collision pictures evoke the greatest response? Because that's how you plan your timing on the presentation of those pictures so you can time the emotions like he was talking about. And it, it, it's unbelievable as you can see, I mean, it shows it while the screen's actually panning by and you can see the uptick based upon either the ask for the money or based upon the image you put up or when you say medical, whatever costs, it's, it's, it was, it was crazy how valuable of a tool this was and how quickly we got it done. And uh, here we go. We've got, uh, we've got Delaney here. This is, this is, this is you. So, and to your point, he, he had some really gruesome, horrible pictures in, in his video. He also had animations. And uh, I mean, one of your pictures, uh, I, I uh, what's the right word, resembled deeply, and it was very upsetting. Um, but when you get your playback then, and again, these guys didn't have time to do this, but you can watch your video. Oh, and you're going to stop right here and see what's going on. Uh, and then you can make your adjustment. And it may be a picture. It may be a phrase. Um, Christian uh, yesterday talked about uh, uh, confusion. And it's funny, I was looking at my deck while she was speaking, and the first slide on our standard deck, the, the top line is a little bit separated from all the other ones below it, and it's confusion. And so I sent it to her, I said, we can, we can get to confusion for you. That one's pretty easy. Uh, and here it is, the confusion, 19%, dwarfing every other, uh, every other read out there. So that's kind of a good thing to know whether you are in a confused state or not. And then you can see right here, well, maybe it's right here that I just made a confusing statement and your video was so straightforward um, and, and uh, it was a beautiful thing.
uh, this is an example of uh, diving into uh, the individual. Oh, I'm going backwards, sorry. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> There were five questions that you guys wanted to get to. Uh, was the fact that there was no contest from the defendant, was that important on the decisions? And then medical care, what's the fair amount for medical care? Here's the $80 million question. My parents used to say it was a $60 million question, but that had nothing to do with the practice of law. Uh, what do you think is a reasonable amount for the three plus 21? And how strongly did the fact that the defendant was stuck on her cell phone, how important was that? So in his five minute video, you heard all of these questions asked, some directly and uh, others a little bit uh, more oblique, pleading no contest. Everybody thought that, uh, uh, everybody thought except right here that pleading no contest helped them influence their decisions. The question on $12 million versus $6 million, half the medical costs, I think on your slide, it was four plus eight for uh, a total of 12. So the question here, uh, and this is post video questionnaire, quick little question, uh, drop down menu, post questionnaire, uh, and post viewing questionnaire, what's the answer? So there's only one out of the five groups that's unhappy or, or unwilling to sign a check for $12 million today. And uh, so if they're out of your jury pool, if there is one Latina, uh, uh, female uh, Latina, then you might need to direct something in your presentation to bring her up. Uh, pleading no contest, so I'm going backwards again, the arrows. Uh, so here's the answer to the question, is $80 million a reasonable number for uh, a human life? And specifically, I'm sure you would have phrased it as this human life with his name. Uh, again, uh, pretty universal acceptance for the $80 million. We're low here on male and we're low here on, on male. Uh, and so that bears from some research. And our researcher, Shelley, would go into a little bit more detail by looking at the 19 or 20 emotions along the line to find out kind of what's going on here. And then the, uh, um, the $120 million question was uh, the last question of the questionnaire is, okay, we've already got a readout on our medical care, 12 million. We've already got a readout on the acceptability and the fairness uh, of um, 80 million. Now let's ask them a free, for, uh, free form question oriented toward the language of three years past and 21 years forward. Um, and what's important here to look at is if you look at 80 million and 100 million, it's this bar forward, this bar forward, this bar forward. And this is, was our quote unquote uh, problem group or uh, group of concern Latina here. But if you add this chunk together with this chunk, it's like 70% 80 million and above versus 30% below. Again, look at this one. That's probably 80%, 80 million above and 20% below. Uh, Caucasian male, a little bit less. And then you can get into the actual numbers behind this. But this is, it, to me, this says right away that if I had any question in my mind that this case for, uh, for our guy was worth $80 million, that's dispelled. And then it'd also be getting comfortable with, uh, um, who was it earlier, getting comfortable. Eric talked about getting comfortable with what you're asking for. So I'm guessing that you wouldn't have been uncomfortable based on this with asking for more than $80 million. All right. Uh, so that's the long and the short of it. And what's, what's kind of interesting to me is, is you guys didn't get to go through eight pages and two hours of conversation with, uh, with, with Shelly to go through this. But I think this gave you a high level answered a few of the strategic questions you were interested in and your video your video was just beautiful because it hit everything it it was uh um the images of the dollar amount very clear very easy to understand uh, so that's what we do and and the way it works is we just uh you get the video we select a, um, a focus group of 100 people 
they watch the video on their smartphone. And at the end of that, the analysis is underway. And uh, just in terms of engagement, the, um, um, the technology is watching eyeballs as well. So we know how engaged the eyeballs are in looking at the, uh, at the media. So if the, and, and this, this was, uh, I think the, uh, the, the industry here was 100%. I think we had 100% eyeball engagement with the screen watching your five minute video. So that's the, that's, the, um, that's the power of the technology. It's not here to replace focus groups. It's, uh, it's an adjunct tool to put in your toolkit. And um, it's probably relevant. It's probably really relevant to high value cases.